Yes guys, welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fix YouTube channel. My name is FPL Nacho and in this video we're going to be discussing all things FPL Defenders. We're going to be looking at the best asset from each price bracket that you need to own ahead of game week one. So if you are new around here, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. And if you want to show that love, make sure you do drop a like on this video. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, guys, so first up, we're going to be looking at the popular 4.5 million defenders. Now, it's worth noting that years gone by, the 4.5 million defender has been basically a staple in all of our FPL drafts. However, this season, because of the prices of some of the FPL defenders offering such amazing value, there's been lots of drafts out there with the, the lowest price defender being about 5 million because we have all these top six sides with phenomenal assets at really reasonable prices. So it's worth mentioning that while we are looking at amazing premium options, there's still great value in the 4.5 million options. And I've highlighted four in particular here. Brighton's Lewis Dunk, Wolves' 8 Nori, Tommy Asu from Arsenal, and James Justin at Leicester. So I'm going to be ranking these as the best to worst, in my personal opinion, right now. Now, it's worth noting that, of course, things can change over pre-season. We might get more information, more signings. But right now, this is roughly how I gauge them as FPL options going into this season. Now, it's worth noting first and foremost that we are taking the stats here per 90 from last season to get a bit of a conclusion on our decisions here. Now, Dunk at Brighton, I would argue, is probably the boring pick, mainly because he is the only centre-back in this option. However, you can see there, expected goals 0.04, which is actually second best on this list, James Justin being 0.05. But... What I will highlight with Dunk first and foremost is that with a centre-back option, I do think that you are getting guaranteed minutes, which is very important first and foremost with a 4.5 million defender. We don't really bring in a 4.5 million defender that is going to be rotated week in, week out. And I think we can confidently say that Dunk is going to be a mainstay in that Brighton defence. And importantly, yes, he is an attacking threat from set pieces. And we know that Brighton defensively do offer great value in defence. Now, looking at the fixture ticker for Fantasy Football Fix, they are 12th best for defensive fixtures, so they're not necessarily looking the best over the opening five game weeks. And I know in particular, Arsenal and Wolves have better fixtures over the opening five game weeks. Now, as I mentioned, I really do think when we are looking at 4.5 million options, while centre-backs are safe picks, and I think there's definitely value there, we obviously want to prioritise going for full-backs or wing-backs, and somebody like Ain't Nori definitely does tick that box. You can see I had 0.05 goals per 90 for him and 4.29 FPL points per 90. Now, it is worth noting once again that his minutes were very limited last season due to rotation and injury. And we are expecting him to actually have a bit of a breakthrough season this year under Bruno Large and hopefully kind of retain that right wing back slot, maybe even on the left wing back slot, depending on injuries to the likes of Johnny and Marcel. Now, with Eight Nori, of course, as I mentioned, operating as a wing-back, that does give us that additional attacking potential that we are looking for in these 4.5 million options. But the one thing I would say about Eight Nori, based on last season as well, is minutes could be a big risk for him in rotation. And while Wolves do have the fifth best defensive fixtures over the opening five game weeks, I do think that potentially the rotation risk for Eight Nori makes him not right up there as the best option for 4.5 million defenders. Now, Tommy Asu at Arsenal is definitely one of those players that I think is in the safer bracket. We're looking at the underlying stats here right now. You can see 0, 0.0 goals per 90, not good at all, and expected goals per 90, 0, 0.03. Now, considering he is a right back in a top six side like Arsenal, who do play attacking football, it's not necessarily the underlying stats that you want to be seeing for a fullback if you are investing 4.5 million. But what Tommy Asu does bring to the table is guaranteed game time with very little competition in that right back slot. And an Arsenal defence that are, I would argue, probably the best defence of the bunch in the players that we're looking at right now. You can see 0.48 clean sheets per 90 and an expected clean sheets per 90 of 0.43, which is much, much better than the other teams that we are looking at here. And importantly as well, the expected FBL points per 90 at 4.44 is again in his favour there. And only eight Nori tops him in the department for FPL points. So I really do think if we are looking for a balance of guaranteed game time in a top side expecting clean sheets, that I really think Tommy Asu is your man for sure at 4.5 million. And it's worth noting that Arsenal do have the fourth best fixtures in the opening five game weeks. 
Now, I think the real kind of joker in the pack is James Justin at Leicester. Suffered a really bad injury, which basically wiped him out for the whole of last season. So it is worth noting that with these underlying stats, they are taken from a very small sample size. So we can't draw up any big conclusions. But what I will say is, if he does get game time, which previous to his injury, he was a number one starter in this Leicester team, operating both as a right back and a left back, you can see that he does have potential. Ex expected FPL points of 3.57, but actual FPL points of 2.62. What I really like about James Justin and Leicester as a whole is the European football now being off the table. Brendan Rodgers can fully focus on Leicester as a Premier League side and no external factors. The one thing going against Leicester is the fixtures. 14th best fixtures over the opening five game weeks slightly puts him off for me. And I think really with a player like this at James Justin, while I think he could be probably the highest ceiling pick and the most exciting, I feel like because the fixtures are difficult for Leicester, Gives, gives you an opportunity to monitor whether he is going to be a starter in this Leicester side. And if he is, then we can look for maybe our early wildcard, which a lot of managers are anticipating, which you can move away from potentially your early 4.5 million defender to go into someone like James Justin. So if I had to rank these four players at 4.5 million, I think I would have Dunk at number four. I think he's guaranteed game time and does offer attacking threat. But I really want someone a bit more exciting in my FPL team. Now, Eight Nori is going to be third on this list. And then I'm going to have James Justin second with Tommy Asu number one. I really do think James Justin could emerge as the best 4.5 million in this list. But as of game week one, I want guaranteed game time. And I think Tommy Asu does offer that in a top side in terms of defensive figures. So guys, let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts? Are there any other 4.5 million defenders that we haven't included that should be on this list? And let me know in the comments, who is your favorite one? So next up, we're going to be looking at the 6 million defenders. And in particular two Chelsea boys. So of course, FPL have done us wonders with the pricing of both Ben Chilwell and Rhys James, pricing them at 6 million, which I honestly think is phenomenal FPL value. Now again, similar to James Justin, Ben Chilwell did suffer a real long-term injury, which basically wiped him out for the entire of Chelsea's season, playing very, very few games. Whereas Rhys James, on the other hand, was very much a mainstay in that Chelsea defence. So when we are looking at the underlying stats here per 90 of last season, just make sure you do take, take it with a pinch of salt because we are looking at a very small sample size for Ben Chilwell, whereas we're looking at a lot larger one for Rhys James, so it is worth noting that. But the big thing that does stand out here is the FPL points. 9.15 FPL points per 90 for Ben Chilwell is absolutely ridiculous and really does show the potential that he does offer in this Chelsea team. Rhys James at 6.81. Don't kid yourselves there. That is still a brilliant uh, FPL points per 90. It's just he's against somebody like Ben Chilwell who had an unbelievable performance last year. Now, with the expected FPL points, it's a lot closer. And actually, Rhys James is delivering in that department, which is great to see. But I think the big difference here when we are looking at these two options is what they offer from a goal threat perspective. I think Ben Chilwell is definitely the one that is going to be goal scoring. And I think definitely Rhys James is going to be goal creation or chance creation. And you can see that in the underlying stats here. Goals 0.5 per 90 and expected goals 0.19 in Ben Chilwell's favour. Whereas the assists are very, very dominant in Rhys James's favour at 0.42 and 0.27. And for anyone who has watched Chelsea games in the past, you will notice that left-hand flank in particular when Chilwell and Alonso do play, very less possession-based and much more getting on the end of crosses and in the six-yard box. Whereas Rhys James, arguably being a much more competent possession-based player, Chelsea do look to have a bit more possession on that right-hand side of the formation. And I think that's why it caters towards him being more of a chance creator rather than a finisher. And I really do think at 6 million, we do need to consider one of these Chelsea assets into our team. Now, the downside, 17th best fixtures over the opening five game weeks for Chelsea from a defensive perspective with games against Tottenham at home, Leeds away and Leicester at home. Defensively, these could be tricky for them from a clean sheet potential. But I think the ceiling that they offer from attacking FPL options, we have to have one of these Chelsea options in our game. Now, Rhys James at the time of recording is currently owned at 44%, which is monstrous for a defender. Only the likes of Cancelo and Trent are above him right now at the time of recording. And with a template developing in FPL right now, I really think this sort of deliberation is where we can take slight changes to the template with very little risk. 
And that's why I think at 11% ownership, I'm slightly favoring Chilwell as an option. As you can see with the underlying stats, there's so little to, to, to break apart from these two options. And I think when you get the opportunity to have the underlying stats back you in your favor and an opportunity to go slightly away from the template, I think that is a great opportunity to do so. And at 30% less owned, I really do think that Chilwell is probably the route that managers should be looking to go to if they want a slight difference on the current FPL template. But again, guys, let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts? Are you fancying Rhys James or are you fancying Ben Chilwell? Or are you going for a double up? Because I really think that is a viable option going forward. We just need to remember those tricky games that they have in the opening of five game weeks. So next up, guys, we were looking at another pair of 6 million defenders. Okay, guys, so here we have a very different set of 6 million defenders, and that is going to be Man City's centre-back duo, Luis Diaz, not Luis Diaz, apologies, Ruben Diaz and Emmerich Laporte at Man City. Now, again, price at the same as both Rhys James and Ben Chilwell. It's very interesting to see the underlying stats of both of these players. Now, you can see that in terms of the goals, very, very much down on what Rhys James and Ben Chilwell were offering. But the clean sheet potential, as we know, Man City being such a dominant defence, no surprises that they are dominated in these departments as FPL options. Now, again, I think the real deliberation here right now is, first and foremost, Diaz or Laporte. Now, Diaz currently sitting at 10% ownership, Laporte at 5% ownership. And I think both are going to have very, very similar game time this season. So I don't really think there's too much in them. I think Diaz would probably just favour personally but I do think that Laporte is probably more of a goal threat from set pieces but I think the real question here and why we got the slide up is whether a Man City centre-back is worth considering ahead of the likes of Cancelo or maybe even a double up as Cancelo and I think the real question mark right now comes back to the value of goalkeepers this season now you may have checked out our previous video on goalkeepers if you haven't make sure you do check that out but with them dropping the prices of goalkeepers and now Edison being at priced at 5.5 million I think if you are opting for Cancelo in your defence, I don't think necessarily Diaz or Laporte should be considered as your Man City double up. And instead, you should be looking to maybe save 0.5 million and invest that in Edison between the sticks as your double up Man City option. Now, Edison averaged 4.19 points per 90 last season. And when you compare that to these two, you can see that that is about one point less per 90, which again does add up over the course of the season. But I really do think at 0.5 million cheaper, I think if I had to choose right now, I'd probably ignore Diaz and Laporte as options and definitely look at Edison as my second Man City defensive coverage if I was going down that route. And we are going to be looking at Cancelo in the next slide where we can compare whether Diaz and Laporte get anywhere near Cancelo as an FPL alternative to him. But as a spoiler alert, guys, I think Cancelo is in a league of his own when we are looking at Man City options. So with that said, guys, Let's head over to the 7 million defenders and we can compare them as the best option. But let me know in the comments, Diaz and Laporte, which one are you considering ahead of your team or neither? Okay, guys, so the last comparison here is going to be the 7 million defenders and the pick of the bunch, of course, is Cancelo and Liverpool's Robertson. Now, as I mentioned, Cancelo as an FPL option, I believe is one of the best value players in the game. Absolutely. Now, while I think Cancelo is the best option in the game for Man City. I think Robertson is probably the second best at Liverpool just because of the amazing value that Trent Alexander-Arnold is offering at 7.5 million. But that's not to say that Robertson isn't a bad FPL option because you can see here per 90 last season, 6.6 .6 FPL points per 90 is unbelievable value. And it absolutely dominates Cancelo in that area, a whole point more per 90. But what I do like to see from Cancelo and where I think he could be an absolute FPL monster it was expected FPL points 6.3 per 90, which shows to me that he has such a massive ceiling that he can continue to improve each season, which is really exciting to see from an FPL perspective. And again, something that we did all moan about last season was Cancelo's one goal in the season. And you can see here, expected goals per 90 were 0.12, where you could, again, you can see serious room for growth for him this season and potentially being even more of a goal threat going into the 2022-23 season. Now, the reason I've got this on screen here, guys, is first and foremost, I want to kind of come straight to the point. I honestly think Cancelo is one of the best value picks in the game. And I would be very, very tough to say managers shouldn't go without him. 
So I think Cancelo is the best Man City defensive option and definitely a defender that most managers should be considering in their game week one squads. I think the real deliberation here right now is, do we go for Trent at 7.5 million and can we afford to go for Cancelo and Robertson at 7 million and effectively spend what would be around 22 million on these three defenders? Now, looking at Robertson's returns here on screen, I want to compare him to Luis Diaz first and foremost because the big deliberation here is, do we go for Trent, Salah and Robertson or Trent, Salah and Diaz? Now, Diaz in his much smaller sample size averaged 6.02 FPL points per 90 and an expected FPL points per 90 of 5.8. So in both here, he was less than Robertson. And remember, Robertson played a lot more games this uh, last season. And we have to remember that Luis Diaz is priced a whole million more than Robertson. So I think right now, as of time of recording, if I had to choose between Robertson or Diaz when we're looking at the potential Liverpool double up in defence, I think that going for Robertson is probably the wiser move. Going for the 7 million defender alongside the 7 million Cancelo means that if we don't see value in Robertson early on in the season, we can look to downgrade him potentially to an additional Chelsea defender or maybe even a 5.5 or 5 million defender and look to change the flexibility of our defence and structure. Likewise, if we do go for Luis Diaz in the midfield, you will have that 8 million slot that you can look to go elsewhere if you want to. So of course, it is dependent on your team structure. But for me right now, looking at these underlying stats for a player price at 7 million, I just can't justify paying the additional 1 million for, to go for Luis Diaz when Robertson poses such phenomenal value. So guys, you have to let me know in the comments here. Is Cancelo locked into your teams? And are you going for the Trent Robertson double up? Or is Robertson maybe somebody that is going to be a lone wolf as your Liverpool defender? You have to let me know in the chat guys so that is going to wrap up today's fpl video guys thank you so much for tuning in that was the defenders video previously we have recorded goalkeepers and value midfielders so make sure you do head over to the channel to check out those videos a nice in-depth look at some of the best options available to you managers and again with it being a new season we have so much content dropping you don't want to be missing a thing so make sure you do subscribe to the channel hit that like on the video and that notification bell so you get an alert every time we do drop a new video. And with all the information taken from fantasyfootballfix.com, all the information is the bio. Everything you need to have to win your mini leagues is in that bio. So make sure you do check it out. So I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be Friday's live stream. Look forward to seeing you all there. Take care. Cheers.